I'm here with Professor Laurie Dudenhofer, who has done work at Kennesaw State University and Georgia State University. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the most important and influential horror films of all time, the 1973 William Friedkin film The Exorcist, which was based on a novel written by William Peter Blatty. A lot of people view the film as your standard Manekian tale of good versus evil, but last year Professor Dudenhofer wrote an essay stating that there might be more to the motion picture than most people would assume. That in fact may actually be a furtive commentary on Persian relations between the United States and Middle Eastern countries, and also the role of science versus religion. Uh, do you mind tell us a little bit about the essay that you wrote? I think that The Exorcist operates on thematics of evil against evil. The first scene, which takes place in Iraq, uh, the cradle of civilization and of Manachian religion um, sets forth clearly and openly those thematics. Um, we see a, we see a shot of two dogs uh, fighting each other um, in the desert. We also see Father Marin, who plays the exorcist in the film, um, Max von Sydow, who plays the exorcist in the film. Uh, on the right hand side of the frame squaring off against uh, Azazu, the demon that we find out in Exo Exorcist 2 um, in Fest Reagan McNeil in the film. Um, instead of understanding these shots and the rest of the narrative in a dialectical framework, a dialectical framework that offsets the forces of good in a cosmic struggle with the forces of evil, or a dialectical framework that offsets medicine and science with religion and mysticism, or a dialectical framework that involves Georgetown in Washington, D.C., in an imagistic contrast to uh, Iraq and the Middle East. We should see um, these three um, dyads not operating in any dialectical resolution or tension. I think that the film cautions us against those types of dialectical interpretations according to the thematics of evil against evil. And in fact, whenever we seek to entertain such uh, dialectics, even on an interpretive level, we sort of enter into an area of struggle, contestation, violence, um, that the film at least seeks to critique, if not negate. Um, which I suppose can be another example of evil against evil, the film itself operating against dialectics as a sort of anti-dialectic. Um, but there's more interesting things going on with the film that um, we can talk about uh, with some of the other questions. Okay. A lot of people have considered the film to be sort of a, a syncretism of William Peter Blatty's idea for the novel and William Friedkin's commentary on religion the social structure of the 1970s. One of the more interesting fan theories I've come across involves an omission in the film. There was a element of William Peter Blatty's novel in which Reagan encountered something of an evil book. Uh, I think the plot mechanism was her mother was auditioning for a role about some supernatural film and she came into contact with a book containing information about you know, black masses and other sort of rituals and you're kind of led to believe that perhaps Reagan is actually faking her demonic possession, just sort of displaying some of the symptoms she encountered in this book. Uh, how do you think that applies to the cinematic text? The Exorcist was met upon its debut um, with severe denunciations from such members of the religious right as Billy Graham, who thought that a demon was living in the celluloid and so forth. Billy Graham was half right on that count. Instead of a demon living within the celluloid, I think that a certain affective charge was living within the uh, celluloid. And that affective charge um, remodulates the relationship between the viewer, the book, and the filmic text. Um, in certain interesting ways. The Exorcist, I think, 
works not only upon the thematics of evil against evil, but also on the thematics of embodiment. Um, one of the things that we see in the film is the pre-prevescent Reagan rotting and decaying and exhibiting uh, a sexual voraciousness in front of our eyes. And so the film maps the generative, the sexual, and uh, the mature against death, decay, and so forth. So I think that the film, which seems to treat historical issues, the tensions with the Middle East, for example, that the film revisits in a timely way in its 2000 re-release, moves in the direction of an ahistorical sense and capture of embodiment that oftentimes looks to the past in two ways. One, idyllically, almost in a utopian vein. You know, we see uh, the past, even the recent past of the 1960s, as full of promise. Or, we see that past as traumatic. Um, as full of suffering, or oppression, or some other type of uh, wrong. Um, so the exorcist suggests on the level of embodiment that whenever we look back to the past, remembering a time that was idyllic, or a time of childhood that was more innocent and so forth, we immediately use rhetorically and strategically that past to critique the present and to make that present um, involve itself in the thematics with Mackian overtones, good versus evil, which dovetails for the exorcist into evil versus evil. It's a way to um, rewrite the past in terms of the, decay, of the decay of the present. And I think that's what happens with Reagan's body throughout the film. And I think that's what also happens whenever we want to compare the film to some other idyllic state. For example, the state of puberty or the innocence uh, that characterizes America before the 1960s counter movement, or even the original text, William Pleader Body's work versus uh, William Friedkin's interpretation of it. I think that whenever we look back to the past, and the exorcist suggests this again with its opening scene, we open ourselves to this thematics of evil against evil, where we characterize the past as better or worse than the present, and ultimately the present therefore is worse or better than the past, so that we have, again, this tension, this violence, this struggle that we see at the level of Reagan's body in the film, which decays, which bursts, which experiences within itself a tension and a destructiveness that I think the film moralizes against. And that's an excellent segue into perhaps the most interesting fan theory out there on The Exorcist. And that is the possibility that Reagan's possessed state is actually brought upon by sexual abuse by either her father or Burke Dennings. Uh, what do you think about that possible analysis of the film? I think that attempts to allegorize away the image of Reagan's body rotting in front of our eyes on the screen fundamentally attempt to soften those images for the viewer. Um, to resort to certain intellectual catch-alls or platitudes that distract from those issues of embodiment, affective charge, and evil against evil anti-dialecticism. 
What I mean by that is this. If we reduce Reagan's condition in the film to an instance of child abuse, then what we immediately do is deflect attention away from the condition of her body in the present on screen, which of course is moving through all types of changes, sexual, scatological, uh, morphological, and effective. And these changes are disturbing. And so what we once again do is resort to a notion of the past, in this case not so idyllic, but actually traumatic, in order to counteract the image in the present. And we once again work towards the thematic of evil against evil. We have the evil again of uh, child abuse set off against the evil of bodily, dis bodily decay and uh, contumelious behavior. And the film, at least at the outset of the narrative, and over the course of it, asks us not to think in those veins. The Exorcist sort of embeds within itself a response to certain forms of criticism of the film. It suggests that when we try to look for answers as to why Reagan was possessed, what we really do is fall into this trap, evil against evil. And I think that it's important to shy away from that and to ask serious questions instead about the effective charge of seeing a little girl's body rotting on screen and the way that carries over to the viewer across historical milieus. Um, although not necessarily across uh, political standpoints. All right, and my final question for you is, seems like everyone has a great first time seeing the Exorcist story. So what was your first screening of the film like? Once again, that relates to the effective charge and surge that I was talking about. Um, I, I, first, I first saw The Exorcist when I was in sixth grade, which is probably far too early uh, for taking in that film. But um, here I am now, so maybe not. It resulted in an essay, which maybe it was an exorcism of sorts. In any case, once I saw the film, I was afraid to go to bed by myself uh, for a number of years because I thought that the bed would shake. There's a famous scene early on in the film where Reagan, um, as she's about to suffer the full-on uh, effects of uh, demonic possession, experiences her bed shaking violently um, in a way that, uh, on the surface of things, could only be supernatural. I thought that was going to happen to, to me uh, whenever I went to bed. But, once again, when we see the condition of Reagan's embodiment in the film, and all of the changes that it moves through, effectual, morphological, and so forth, what happens, in a way that doesn't necessarily involve the thematic of evil against evil, is that the viewer's condition of embodiment, and their relation to their environment, changes. Um, the Exorcist doesn't necessarily exist in the tension of a screen performance with its viewer. Of course, each, uh, each changes in relation to the other. The viewer changes the nature of the text uh, through interpretation, through effective response, uh, through carrying that experience to other viewers and talking with them and so forth. And the Exorcist, in my case at least, changes the way I related to my own body, at least uh, during the time of my own adolescence and uh, pubescence. At the same time, The Exorcist did so much more and that changes and that in, in that it changed the way I related to my environment and probably still do. Um, the bedroom example is one of those things, but writing the essay is another. Conducting this interview with you, conducting this interview with you is another example of the way it sort of uh, changes and uh, rewrites that environment, and I would argue that any film does that, um, as long as we open ourselves to it. Um, in that sense, as viewers, we're all in the position of um, Jason Miller's character in that text, um, Father Karras, when he opens himself uh, to the demon living in the celluloid, uh, so to speak. 
we all open ourselves to that demon living in the cellular void in ways that change the way we relate to ourselves, even in terms of our sleep habits and our relationship to our bedrooms and the other private recesses of our houses and lives. It fundamentally rewrites and, and refolds the relationship between public and private experience in ways that I think move outside of the tension of evil against evil because all of these things bleed into each other, crisscross each other, reinflect each other in ways that are simply outside of dialectical simplicities and Manachian dualisms. And that's what I think is nice about seeing the exorcist in terms of affect, um, your response, and embodiment. It sidesteps um, those political, historical, and scientific dualisms and oppositions which catch so many of us up in a condition of violence and nowadays what Umberto Eco calls neo-war. So that's one of the values I think of The Exorcist even in its re-release uh, can share with us ways to take up a full address of embodiment that allows us to think outside of dialectics which oftentimes use the past strategically to create further uh, tension um, and destruction. <laughs>